Okay, the review questions for chapter 9 will be on page uh, 715, and we're going to look at 21 through uh, 25. So the way this video works is you're, I'm going to introduce the problem, you try the problem, and then you can play the video and see if you got the correct answer. So you get uh, uh, ultimate feedback. Uh, the formulas on page 714, uh, all the formulas for the chapter. So if you, if you need to look at those, they're right there um, on the center of the page. You've got the law of sines, law of cosines, and the area of the triangles. All right, here's number one. So I'm going to draw the picture of number one, and then you can go ahead and try it and see if you get the correct answer. So this one here, we have to actually draw the picture for it. So we have a hotel at the top of a hill, and we're going down to a lake on a straight path and it wants to know about the elevation and when you read the problem um, it, it says it goes from 5,000 feet down to uh, uh, 14 or uh, 4,100 feet so it's a 900 foot drop and this is a straight up right triangle trig and it says that the the trail here is uh, 4,100 feet so it's a 900 foot drop, boom, boom, boom. And all they want to know is says, what's the, the grade of the trail? The, the, and what the angle of inclination. So we want this angle right there, theta. So go ahead and find theta. Okay, the first hint if you're struggling with this is, did you use the opposite and hypotenuse ratio, the sine ratio? Did you try that? So here's the solution to it. Hopefully you got the right answer. So sine of theta is equal to um, 900 over uh, 4,100. <clears throat> so now we do inverse sine. Inverse sine of 900 over 4,100. So inverse sine tells you the angle. Sine sine of an angle tells you the ratio. We know the ratio, so we have to go backwards to find the angle. So this is basically straight out of, <clears throat> whoops, inverse sine, straight out of geometry from when you were a, a wee lad and, and lass, if that's the correct term. Uh, and boom, so 12.7 degrees. So the, the theta right there is 12.7 degrees. So that's the angle of inclination to your up between the lake and back and forth. All right, the next one here, we want to know how tall or how high up the helicopter is. Um, there might be more than one way to do these problems. So if you do it slightly different than me, that's okay. As long as you go through a process and get the correct answer. So here's the picture here. These guys are 100 feet apart, and there's a helicopter up here. It says that this forms an angle of 25 degrees looking up at the helicopter, and this one's 40 degrees looking up at the helicopter. So what I did to set this one up is I want to know how high the helicopter is. So I found this height right here. And I guess it's above the people, not to the actual ground, because um, that's the answer that, that they gave is right there. So what I did for this one is I used right triangle trigonometry again, and I split it up into two parts. So from here to here is 100, so we, we broke this up into two pieces. So I know I can call this side x, right? This side's x, and then over here would be the other part out of x. So it's 100 minus x. And then we want to know the height. So what you have to do is you have to set up two, uh, two ratios and because there's too many variables here to just do it in one thing. So what I did is I did a, I found um, a ratio for this triangle and found a ratio for this triangle and then algebraically uh, solve for X. So this is a good problem. Go ahead and go ahead and try it. All right, here is um, one of the ratios that I set up. So here's my first hint. So in case you're confused, so tangent of 25 degrees is equal to h over opposite over this 100 minus x. Then for the other one, try and set that one up. And here it is. 
tangent of uh, 40 degrees is equal to h over x. So now algebraically, I can multiply these things over and get h by itself. And those h's are the same, so I'm just kind of creating a system of equations here. So 100 minus x is times uh, tangent of 25 degrees, and that's equal to h, which is also equal to, multiply that x over, x tangent of 40 degrees. So now we know algebraically those two things are equivalent to each other. So you can take that out and just say that this equals that, and you can solve for x. All right, so um, algebraically, we need to distribute this through the parentheses here. So these are equal to each other, so distribute through. So we got 100 uh, tangent of 25 degrees minus x times tangent of uh, 25 degrees is equal to x tangent of 40 degrees. So when you solve an algebra equation, you got to get the variables on the one side. So we got to get the x's to the same side. So we're going to add that over. So it's 120. Whoops, 100 tangent of 25 degrees is equal to x tangent of 25 degrees plus x tangent of 40 degrees. So I'm going to um, factor out the x tangent of 25 degrees plus tangent of 40 degrees. So then I'm going to divide that over because it's just one thing here that gets divided over. So it's 100 tangent of 25 degrees divided by tangent of uh, 25 degrees plus tangent of 40 degrees is equal to x. Now, to make this easier for yourself, if you needed to have changed um, those to decimals, to think about it that way, um, that makes the algebra a little bit easier if we like, would have converted all those to decimals, like with a couple decimal points or something. Um, but this is the way to keep the exact answer going, and math people like exact answers. So we type this into the calculator, and we get uh, 35x is equal to 35.72. So I just type that in, and that's feet. Okay, now that's not the that's not the answer to the problem. We don't know how high it is. So now we know that this right here is 35, right? So x is x is 35. So then um, I know that h, right, is the 35 times the tangent of 40. So all I have to do is multiply this by the tangent of 40, because x times the tangent of 40 is also the height. So I just take this number um, that I found, uh, 35.72 times the tangent of 40. And I got 2997. So that's how high the helicopter is, is 20, oops, is 29.97 feet. Okay, the next question is we're constructing a road and we have to go around We have to go around this clam bay here, so we have to make the road go ee, 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 like that. All right. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to we want to figure out these angles in here. Um, the angle 120, so that means this is 60, and then 115, this is uh, 65 degrees. So I got 60 degrees there, 65 degrees, which means this part up here is 55 degrees. All right, well, the first thing that I can do is I can find the length of this across here using the law of cosines. So you wanna do that. So go ahead, step one is to find this length across there using the law of cosines. All right, so here's the law of cosines. Law of cosines, um, I'm gonna call this Z. All right, I got interrupted by somebody that came in the room, and um, I don't know what I said about this problem, so I'm just going to briefly repeat what I said. Um, hopefully, I got all, all the stuff. So this would be 60 here because it's a straight line. That would be uh, 65. It's kind of hard to read that. That's 65 right there because it's on a straight line, and then 55 in there because that plus that plus that has to be 180. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find this length right here because that's part of the road. I'm going to use the law of cosines for that. So go ahead and try the law of cosines on that. So that, the law of cosines works perfectly when you have side angle sides. So you're looking for this side over here. Uh, so here's the solution to this side. So I'm going to call this z. So z would be equal to square root a quarter mile squared plus a quarter mile squared minus two times one quarter times one quarter cosine of 55 degrees. And I type that into the calculator. You can type it in <coughs> 0 0.23 miles. Okay, now um, I'm going to do the law of sines. So I'm going to find this whole side here and this whole side here using the law of sines. And so um, try and try and set that up first, and then and then see the solution to it. But basically, you have um, 65 degrees is opposite this side. And let's go ahead and call this side y, so we can do uh, this together. And then 60 is opposite this side right here, which I'm going to call x. So once I figure out what y is, then I just take out the quarter of a mile, and then I'll know the length of the road there. And the same idea over here. Once I find x, I can take out the quarter of a mile and know that side right there. But I do know this now because of the law of cosines. So go ahead and set up the, um, you have to do the law of uh, sines twice to get x and y, and then you'll have to subtract and get all that. So try that next to find out what x is to get this piece and, and that piece by subtracting the quarter. So here's the setup for the law of sines. Uh, the law of sines would say sine of 55, which is the angle at the top over angle of the top over 3 is equal to uh, the 65 of the y sine of 65 degrees over y and then you can also set up this one here um, with the x it's 60 and x so it's the sine of 60 degrees and x so I'm going to cross multiply and divide to find y and then put my finger over this cross multiply and divide to find, figure out the uh, for x. So when you do that you find that y is equal to 3.32 and x is equal to 3.17. So that's the whole length so I just got to subtract out the quarter. Um, and I know the length of this right there. So here we go to find the final answer. So it's going to be 3.17 minus a quarter plus 3.32 minus a quarter and then plus 0.23. So 6.22 miles is the length of the road to go around the clam bay there. So the answer is 6.22 miles. All right, number 24. So again, the process, what I'm going for here is I'm going to set up the problem. You try the problem, and then I'll give you some hints to set it up, and then uh, we'll go from go from there. Um, now we're being blown off course by these winds. So it's 200 miles from here to here, and we get blown off course for four hours. Well, it's four hours. Um, at 18 miles an hour, if you read through that. So this means this is 72 miles right there. Well, there's the two sides and the angle in between. So two sides, angle in between, to find this side over here. That's definitely the law of, if you say cosines, you're correct. So I'm going to call this x right there. So what is x equal to? It's the square root. Um, the two sides are 200 squared plus 72 squared minus 2 times 72 times 200 cosine of the angle in between, which is 15 degrees. All right, that finds x, and that's part A. Um, 
All right. Then we want to know the angle. We want to know the angle that it is um, uh, needs to turn through to get back on course again. So I'm going to find this angle right here, theta, which is the obtuse angle. Um, I'm going to use the law of cosines to do that, and I have to remember that it's going to be the ambiguous case because of the obtuse angle, 131.78. So set up the law of sines for that. Law of sines. I don't know if I said cosines or not. Mentally I'm distracted. Okay, focus, Mr. Jackie. So law of sines. And it's going to be the, the, um, the ambiguous case because when you do inverse sine on this, it's going to tell you that it's a small angle, but it's really an obtuse angle. So we have uh, 15 degrees in this and then theta and the 200. So we'll go ahead and set that up. So to find theta, we would do uh, sine of 15 degrees over 131.78, and then sine of theta is over uh, 200. So I'm going to um, cross, multiply, and then do inverse, inverse sine to find the angle. So let me go ahead and just type that in. Um, sine 15 degrees times 200 divided by 131.78 and then inverse sine. So 23 degrees. And that's obviously not a 23 degree angle. It's the supplement of this 23 angles, which happens to be the angle that's right there that we're looking for. So um, 180 minus the answer is 156. So it's 156 right there, and then um, that's the 23. So how far do they have to turn? They have to turn the 23.1 uh, degrees. Okay, and then this answer was the 131.78. All right, now we have to compare the times. Um, like how much longer is this gonna take us? Doggone winds blowing us off course. So C, distance divided by uh, rate is equal to time, because distance equals to rate times time. So you just gotta do that. You gotta find out how much time it would take to go the 200 miles, and then you got 72 miles here and uh, 131 miles here. Um, and you just, that's a, so that's a longer distance versus a shorter distance. So, so you're just going to do um, the distance, so try it, and then subtract the two times, and then you'll, you'll get the, the difference between the two. So here is the answer. It's 200 miles if you go normally, 18 miles, versus, so that's one time, because distance divided by rate is time versus going the other way, which is 131.78 plus 72 divided by uh, 18. So those are two different times. We're going to subtract those. This is the longer one minus the shorter one, and then we'll get the difference in the times. So we can just set that all up here on the calculator. And when I did that, I got a difference of, and you can do this on your calculator and check to see, I got a difference of 0 0.21 hours longer. So this one is bigger than that one by that much. Okay, number 25, the last one here, we're estimating the area of a lake. So we've set up uh, three triangles essentially. And I need to know the length across from here to here. All right, well, look, two sides and an angle in between. And I need to know this length across here. Well, two sides and the angle in between. So that screams law of cosines. So do the law of cosines to find this length and to find this length. All right, so here is the law of cosines. So it's going to be this length here, I'm gonna call x. So x is equal to the square root of the two sides, which is 100 squared plus 125 squared minus two times 100 times 125 uh, cosine of 50 degrees. Set 
second square root. And we type all that in. And you type it all in, you get 97.8. Okay, I'm going to call this y. So y is the same thing. Square root, 70 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 70 times 50 cosine of 100 degrees. I'll type all that in the calculator and I get 92.8. So this side here is 97.8 and this side over here is 92.8. Ninety seven point eight, ninety two point eight. Okay. Um, these two triangles here would be easy to find the area. I'm gonna call this K one, K two, and this one right here is K three. So remember it's when you have the side angle side, side angle side, it's just the one half um, A B uh, sine of angle C. So it's the angle in between. So K1, try that. And then K2, try that. Now this one right here in the middle, I have all three sides. When you have all three sides, you can use uh, Hero's formula. So K1, K2, um, here we go, K1, so it's one half, the two sides, 100 times 125, angle in between, sine of 50 degrees. Uh, K2 is this one over here, it's one half, 70 times 50 times uh, sine of 100 degrees. So you type that in, type that in, and for this one, K1 is 4,000, 787.8 k2 is uh, the second highest mountain in the world 3.4 and as a mountain joke uh, and uh, k3 would be hero's formula because we can do the three sides so that formula needs to know the s the perimeter half the perimeter sorry so half the perimeter would be 92.8 plus 50 plus 97.8. Add all that together and divide by 2. So when you do that, you get S is equal to 120.3. So that's the, that's the S in the formula. So now we just type all that into the calculator. So it's 120.3 um, times 120.3. Minus the three sides. So 50 is one of the sides, 120.3 minus another side, 92.8 is one of the sides, 120.3 minus 97.8 is another one of the sides. So there's there's the uh, area for the other one. Type that into the calculator. I got 2,287.5. 2,287.5. That would be correct. So now we're going to add these three answers together for K1 is the area of the first triangle, K2, and K3. We add all those together for a grand total of area uh, for this lake, estimating the area of the lake would be uh, 8,798.7 8 square feet. So units are obviously important with this. And that concludes these five problems. And basically it's five minutes per problem um, as we averaged, averaged out here.